I looked at some of your weights, 256 for Wilder, 247 yeah. for Klitschko, 263 yeah. tonight. The reason I bring up the weight is you said in the fighter meetings yesterday, I wasn't here, I was covering the NBA Finals, but I was told yeah. that the most dangerous fights for you, where your family's like, uh-oh, is not Wilder or Klitschko. They know you'll be okay for those. It's these kind of fights. These are the potential banana skins, yes. Why? Because I don't get flowing for people who I think ain't world champions or ain't gonna give me a challenge. But you know, the more time I spend around Tom, the more confidence I see in him. Hey, this guy's really coming to fight. Yeah. He's not bothered, he's not flustered, he's in Las Vegas for the first time. He seems very happy. I think he's gonna come and give it a really good go. And when you see Anthony Joshua get knocked out by Andy Ruiz, what it, and I was talking to Joshua before the fight, week before the fight, and he was saying, look, I wanna fight Wilder and, and Fury now because you can lose to anyone in the heavyweight division on any given night. Yes. Muhammad Ali used to talk about that. How do you feel about that? I feel fantastic. I've trained well, everything's gone well. I'm gonna put on a masterclass performance on Saturday night. But I mean about the risk that, that you face at heavyweight, particularly nowadays. These aren't 200 pounders fighting when Joe Lewis and Rocky Marciano fighting. Mm. These guys are massive. This guy's 235 pounds with of a course. sneaky right hand. Of course, listen, it doesn't matter who you're fighting. They've all got an opportunity. So, you know, he's unbeaten. He's never lost a fight. I'm excited. When you signed with Top Rank to yeah. be here on ESPN, you talked to me on SportsCenter the day it happened about the platform that ESPN has, about the reach, about how you feel it would be the best kind of um, uh, platform to amplify who you are, to, yeah. to reach. How has that experience been so far? It's been good, you know. I've done a lot of media stuff and I've done a lot of touring around, a lot of TV shows, radio shows. I'm spreading the word, spreading the story on mental health. Can't get enough of it. But I've just got to keep winning in the squared circle and uh, the story will roll on and roll on and roll on. Now, let me ask you this because I heard you say, you called him a bum on the, on the stage. And you talk a great game and you have a big larger than life personality and people show up to just see if you can win. Everyone else, they want to see them look spectacular. With you, they just want to see if you can back up the talk and even just win the fight. Floyd Mayweather made a lot of money doing 28 that. 28 times in a row, baby. 28 have tried and 28 have failed. 11 right? years undefeated. But I also noticed that you have a lot of respect for your opponent. That you also, you, you, say, and you said nice things about Joshua in defeat, sent him a nice message. You talked very respectfully to Deontay Wilder in most of the build up to that fight. When you call a guy a bum right before the fight, is that the adrenaline of the fight kicking in? Is that you just being a showman? Do you really feel that in that moment? Or have you taken him a little lightly? Are you, do you need to kind of talk yourself into it at this point? I don't need to talk my way into nothing. I'm letting him know it's on. You know, it's all right being nicey nicey at the press conferences and all that, it's a show. I let him know tonight it's on, it's game on, he's game. Sorry for my uh, language. Yeah, we're going to have to bleep, bleep that out. <laughs> yes. But listen, it's on. Listen, it'd it take 10 Tom's Waters to beat a man like me. Mm -hmm. I don't care about nobody in the heavyweight division. I'm plowing them all out. They're all getting knocked out, every single one of them. Okay, I'm you, starting on Saturday night with Tom Schwartz. You said knocked out. You're a big, strong guy. You're an excellent defensive fighter. Yeah. But you haven't scored knockouts against top opponents where it looks like maybe you could have. Yeah, of course. Is that an issue of mentality? No. That's, that's the mission of a chess match at the highest level. You know, sometimes I don't have to. Most of the time, I never have to exchange with these bums. It's just me hitting them and them losing, okay? So when I can do that so easy, why would I get caught up in a brawling match and give someone a 50% chance? But old Tom, on the other hand of it, he's got to feel the power straight away because he's a German, for one, and he comes forward for another. So he's going to walk onto a big left hook or a big right hand, and he'll feel it straight away. When you away. say he's a German, for one, what do you mean by that? I mean to come forward to fight. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to run away around the ring. He's got to put it on me from round one. So when they do that, then they get hit hard, like Deontay Wilder almost went in the first round of our fight. I switched up him with a straight left to the side of the head, and that was him. But you didn't follow it. Now, now, there are two ways to look at this. One is, why am I going to give the other guy a chance? I'm outboxing him. Mm. You have the superior skills, right? Yeah. On the other hand, 
when you let a guy hang around, Deontay Wilder, who may be the biggest puncher who ever lived, still has a right hand to hit you with in the 12th round. Of course. So that, so it, wouldn't it make sense at times to press your advantage to get a guy out of there? It would, but then the show would be over quickly, wouldn't it? And I wouldn't get to entertain and show what I can do for heavyweight. I wouldn't get to move like Sugar Ray Leonard, would I, if I knocked him out and around? And therefore, I'm having a long time out of the ring, so I need to get back sharp again with these bombs. He was eating a Snickers bar in your face. What was he telling you? What were you telling him? He wasn't saying anything. He was agreeing with me. I was saying he'd get knocked out. He was like, OK, no problem. What do you think that was about? Why was he eating a Snickers bar? I think he's using Andy Ruiz's uh, Snickers to psych himself up for the fight. So I asked you earlier um, about, I told you about Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, you know, the. The, last, the next guy doesn't always look like the last guy. You certainly don't look like the last big star in boxing. Six foot nine Irish traveler from over the pond who's not a knockout artist and a big smack talker but gets off the deck to defend the lineal heavyweight title against the biggest puncher ever like that. Floyd wasn't like the last guy either. African-American, no gold medal, not a big puncher, 130-pounder, became a, made hundreds of millions of dollars. And he did it by creating a persona outside the ring, and people would pay just to see if he could win. And he didn't knock a lot of guys out. And now you're saying he had the same mentality. Why would I open myself up to danger when I can beat him very safely for me? Did, did he influence you at all? Did Floyd influence you at all? No, no, I don't look at other fighters for influencers, but this game, if you look back at history, the brawlers, they have a short career. They end up getting knocked out, OK? The boxers have a long career. Always. And in order to go down in history as a great, or in order to keep entertaining the fans for long periods of time, you have to stay unbeaten. So, as we saw last Saturday night, when two brawlers brawl up with each other, anything can happen. Tyson before. Ruiz won't land one punch on me in 12 rounds. He's a bum. So, you know, but if I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and give him a chance to exchange, then he's got a 50-50 chance of landing on me first.